Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. Prenzo here. Just one second please, I'm just checking my camera. Okay, checking the setups here on my camera. Okay, everything is okay. Okay. Uh, here are the regular colors that I use. Titanium white, cadmium yellow, cadmium orange, cadmium red, permanent alizarin crimson, raw umber, cobalt blue, and black. Hello Bob, hello Nilu, hello Maggi. Okay, let's start sketching. To sketch, I'm gonna use charcoal. I have here vine charcoal. Okay, just one second. Move with the photograph here. Okay, stop the part of my space for mixing the colors here. Yeah, I'm gonna use all of this. Uh, let's see. Now the first thing I do is I squint on my eyes and try to see light and shadows. I try to simplify what I see, just simple shapes. You know, I love the photograph, I love the, you know, the horse eye. It's pretty nice. Okay, I can think that I can just do this here, around here. Yeah, it's gonna be the horse face here. Okay. Yeah. Okay, for the okay for the girl. Let's see. Okay, something like that. Hmm. Yeah, I can just draw the face inside this square. Okay. Okay, that's always. I mean, for me, it's a, uh, the beginning is always pretty simple. Once I got this, and uh, step back, I check out the size of the head, the horse, horse's head. Okay, all of that, and then I started thinking about details. Okay, when it's about drawing the face, I always rely on proportions. Okay, you know we can split the face in three portions: from the hairline to the eyebrows from the eyebrows, the same distance, you repeat the same distance to the bottom of the nose and again to the bottom of the chin, okay? Now we, we paint kids, kids uh, has a bigger head, okay? And a bigger head make all this area look smaller, shorter, and they have uh, bigger eyes. When I got these proportions, I split this in three portions and I usually I see the eyes on top of this portion. Now that's not gonna work. I'm gonna need to move that a little bit down. Why? Because her eye is a little bit bigger. And to draw the eye again I'm thinking about simplification and I would just draw um I cannot keep the measurements here. Okay. I'm gonna draw it just a triangle. With that, it's gonna be enough for the forehead. Since I have three portions here, okay, one, two, three, I can start working just on the first one. For that, I could just, I could try to draw how how tilted is the forehead. At the same time, I could try to draw a negative space in this area here. Okay, that means I gotta see this portion as a as a shape, as a flat shape. Okay, hello Fanchon, hello uh, uh, Damon, hello Sharon, hello Bob. Drink water, hello Araby, Leslie, Garu, hello Marius, hello Romeo, Sapanta. Now, 
uh, when I try to draw that, and I try to draw the, the, at the same time, you know, the contour of the forehead, I, I, I mean that just, uh, let's say I'm, I'm drawing this, just paying attention to two things, a positive space here, all this area, and a ne negative space here. For the nose, I can do the same. Look at that simplification. Something pretty simple, just like like that. And at the same time, I check out this area here. Okay. Now for the lower portion, at the position of the mouth, usually we split this in two, and we see the mouth on top of this line. Okay. Now, if we think about simplification again, we gotta think about the mouth as a triangle, okay? We do something just as simple as this, and then we draw the upper lip, the lower lip, and we do that. From there, obviously, we need to add more and more details. Yeah. Okay, let's see the Okay, now for the holes, it's kind of, kind of thin, no? I see the eye, I'm gonna check alignment, the tear duct on the horse's face, horse's eye is around, it's kind of aligned to the eye, to her eye. Here I have tear duct. Now, again, I try to simplify. I see something like this. Curve. This and this. Okay, and the eye is inside here, like that. Okay. Now, here the corner of the eye is aligned up with the hairline. Okay. I'm checking those alignments. Uh, here on my left, I mean obviously you don't see that, but I hold a brush with my left hand and I do this on top of the photograph. Remember it was mentioned I got the photograph next to my canvas. Okay, and that makes things, you know, kind of easy for me to compare, to measure, and to check out those things on the photograph. Okay. Hello Rebecca, hello Makamai, he's saying it's, re it's already almost 4 a.m. here in PH, I don't know where it's PH, but anyway, thank you for being here. Okay. Okay, uh, I'm gonna draw again. Eyebrow. The hair. Okay, here is the uh, the pupil. Okay, the iris is darker. Maybe I should paint it a little bit lighter. Let's see. And the rains, I don't know about the rains. Maybe I want to spend too much time painting this. Maybe I shouldn't paint that. But anyway, let's see. Okay, I'm thinking that I should do any change. Maybe about color, maybe add some kind of blue, light blue sky. Make the horse more orangey. Yeah, okay. I'm just thinking out loud because obviously when I see a, a, a photograph that I love, uh, okay, the first thing is just I want to copy, you know, the photograph. But at some point I always want to change something to add, to maybe I could add more color, more saturation. It's up to anyone what we can do with, you know, our paintings. Okay. Again, I'm going to erase again. Or 
Okay, I need to just go over my drawing with a raw umber, a little bit of paint. Okay, this is gonna be kind of faster. I'm comparing at the same time I'm doing this and comparing, okay? It's not like I'm just going over. It's not because I already drew the face that I'm just going over. No, I'm still just, you know, bouncing my eyes from the photograph to uh, the paint as I as I just do this and doing that. Just bouncing my eyes from left to right from the photograph to my painting. Okay, I think I think now I see the face. I like it. I'm gonna start painting uh, the horse, just one color, just one, one flat color. Uh, okay, I'm gonna pick up a bigger brush. I got here, this is number 16. I think it's gonna be, it's gonna be okay. Okay, I need to add another color to my palette. Oh my God, I don't have it here. I was looking for burnt sienna. Just easier to just, just, just one second. Oh, I have it here. Okay, I have here burn china. Just picking up from the tube, and that's gonna be enough. I just need a base of flat color. Okay, uh, now let's paint. Uh, I got a little bit of this color on the brush. I'm gonna just add a touch of white. I'm gonna paint here. Maybe I'll, I, I'll change later this color and maybe I'll paint a light blue sky. But, you know, I'm just taking advantage of what I have right now. Okay, uh, let's see. Here's light blue, copper blue, and white. Okay. Is that something simple, something flat? Okay. Now the face, okay, to paint the face, uh, what I do is I squint down my eyes and I try to, you know, see light and shadows, okay? Okay, I'm gonna just add a photograph here on, okay, just to, okay, this one, you see this one? pretty dark when we squint down our eyes we try to see something like this okay it's pretty clear 
you know, where's the light on the face, where's the shadows on the face, okay, that's what we can, we can do that with our cell phones, just, you know, darken up the photograph, in this way we can see more, okay, now I pick up clean brushes, and I'm going to start just mixing, at least I need a couple of colors, okay, we can just mix more, we can, we can mix a value scale here, for the lights and shadows, but if we just try, we want to start pretty simple, we just need at least two values, just, you know, one lighter color for lights, just mixing orange, camion orange, camion red, and white, okay, now I don't want to get this, the lightest light on the face, that this is this area, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mix a kind of a mid-tone, Okay, I'm gonna add that color later. I'm knocking down with raw umber. Did you check out my videos? You're gonna, I mean, it's gonna be pretty easy to know what colors I mix because I keep repeating the same. Okay, and that's gonna be kind of easy to, let's say, have a way to get to mix a, a skin color. Now, camion orange, raw umber, white, a touch of camion red. I'm gonna mix more paint. I don't have too much paint here. More, more. Okay, I have two values. Okay, squint down your eyes as much as possible. And if, if you have seen some of my videos in my channel, I have some uh, smaller videos that I show some of uh, like a, a time lapse, a time lapse video of my classes. And then you can see that the class is a little bit different with, uh, in the way I paint in the class that I paint here on YouTube. Okay, in the class I prepare one, two, three, four, five values. I use a filter with Photoshop to create. For the people that wanna know, the filter is, is called, you can find it in the upper menu, it's, it's called uh, artistic, and it's called cutout filter. And you got a photograph, and Photoshop, what, what it does is separates values on the face, okay? Now, that's for the purpose of just practicing we're not gonna get that opportunity all the time. We got what we need to do is just get to use, you know, to the idea about separate values when we see something. As soon as we see something, you know, the first thing that we do is just squint down our eyes. This is too light. Okay. I'm gonna show you really fast what I want. Okay, this color is better. Yeah, I think it's better. Now I got light here. That's pretty easy to see on the photograph. Light. Light on the nose. And light here. Okay. I'm gonna pick up the other color. Paint here. Sometimes I can even do this. Separate this from this. Obviously, we know that there are planes of the fa on the face. We can use those planes to separate light and shadows. Okay. All the things that we use it depends on each uh, person, like on the personal level, on the things that we know. The more we know, it's just like we have more tools, more techniques. Okay. Now I got this, I can see pretty clearly light yeah, and shadows. I need darker shadows, uh, obviously I need 
uh, like the slides it's just this is just the beginning okay okay let me check out oh looks like I'm gonna just uh, give a judgment here okay let's check out some questions hello Makeme uh, hello Daniel uh, hello Evely, hello Legendary Noob, uh, hello da Daniel again from Chile, oh, welcome, hello Fairview, hello Nicole, oh, Fairview Animal Hospital, oh, that's a uh, spirit history of Punjab, oh, hello, Dr. Dabri, oh, hello Dabri, oh, okay. Um, okay, I'm going to lean back and just squint down my eyes and compare. Mm. Okay, now I can prepare a lighter color here. It's going to be the same white, orange, touch of red. Okay, I see that the light is no like a really warm light. That's, I don't add in white here. It's kind of a pretty big light. Then I paint the light here. Okay. Okay, now don't expect uh, this color to stay the same way that you have that color on the palette. It's not going to stay the same way on the painting. I mean, unless you just lay down the brush stroke like that with a lot of paint and don't touch it anymore. Okay, but as soon as we do this, okay, some mixing is happening. It's just like picking up the color from here and put it on top of this one. Yeah, you see what happens? I got a lighter variation of this one. That's kind of what's happening here. I mean, uh, when we paint on the Prima, I always mention, you know, we mix on the palette, we mix on the painting. Okay, if you have a yellowish variation here, you think it's going to be too yellowish. Remember that you're going to put down, you're going to lay down this one on top of this one. And the result is a little bit different. Okay, I'm gonna paint the hair. We should be able to kind of foresee what's gonna happen when we lay down the color. Okay, I'm gonna mix raw umber and white. I think this color is gonna be okay. I'm gonna add a little bit of linseed oil. I see a little bit of a grayish, greenish color on the hair. But you see I have a really thin layer. That means that I'm gonna be able to change this a lot just by adding more, more, more paint. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna add a touch of orange here. a different brush. I prefer to use more and more brushes instead of just keep cleaning my brushes. Obviously that, uh, that's uh, when I paint uh, on YouTube or when I paint at a Prima I, I prefer to do that. Sometimes when I work just on a painting that I know that I'm gonna add the first layer, I'm gonna let it dry, I'm gonna add the second layer, I'm gonna let it dry. Sometimes I just I just used a couple of brushes and I keep cleaning them, that's okay. But here, we don't have that much time. 
you know, I ended up using like 10, 15 brushes. Mm -hmm. I got a question here. Uh, hello, Sylvia. Hello, Mr. Herb Jones. Saying greetings. Do you ever turn your painting upside down for perspective? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's the thing that I cannot do here. There are a lot of things that I cannot do here on YouTube because my setup, I got my camera here, I got this, you know, my camera is kind of between me and the painting next to my cheek. Yeah, and there are a few things that I cannot do, but when definitely that's something that we gotta do. We gotta use a mirror for sure. We gotta just we can just put the painting up upside down. When I do that, you know what? I prefer to uh, let's say have the paint in here and the photograph, you know, stick to something. Let's say that uh, the ideas have have both your painting and the photograph. And when you put upside down the painting, the photograph is gonna be next to the painting, and you still compare both, okay? When you use the, a mirror, the same. I, I, I just do the same. And this way, uh, it's just easy for me to compare, because we want that, we wanna compare a lot, obviously. When we paint a portrait, no, nobody's gonna say that, I. Nobody cares about likeness. We care about likeness a lot. Okay. Uh, sometimes we shouldn't care when it, it's kind of for me. It's kind of uh, what I want to do. Sometimes I don't care about the likeness that much. When in my head I'm just thinking, hey, this is gonna be an exercise, a value exercise. I'm gonna pay attention a lot of the values. I'm gonna get closer to the face, but not not like not like if I don't get the likeness, that's gonna be too. That's gonna be. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be maybe too worried about that. Okay, and sometimes when uh, I start painting, and I I think okay, I wanna I wanna get that expression, the expression of the face. And when I paint, I paint a celebrity. Definitely, I want to get the likeness. Okay. For today, I want to get closer. Yeah. But now it's not like I gotta get just like as, as as close as possible. No, it's not like that. It's more about you know everything. It's just a, it's, a, it's just about the beauty of the image. Yeah. Hello. Uh, hello, Paul. Ah, Paul, that's my son. <laughs> uh, okay. Hello, Gracina. Hello, Joanne. Hello, Sharon. Okay. What's that on your comment, Poga? No, my son, he just had a sticker, and I don't know what it is. What is that? Okay, anyway. Uh, for sure he's asking me for something. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to now, I painted basically the whole canvas. Now I have something that I can, I can compare with the photograph and I can see obviously, look at the color, how different it is. Look at the face, you know. Maybe it's too colorful. Yeah. I know I'm gonna knock down the color here. I'm gonna don't knock down the color on the horse. Okay. Um, if we have like an orangey color, okay, we can knock down. Imagine that you have here an orange. Here, if you wanna knock down this color, okay. The first option we have is just using the the opposite color in the color wheel okay yeah, I'll pick up any color wheel and you have there uh, you know it's a, it's a circle the opposite color what's the opposite color of, of orange blue yeah yeah just that just add a little bit of blue now you can make it lighter you can make it darker it depends on the of what you want. Okay, uh, one second. 
Let me try to do that here. Okay, I'm thinking about that here, blue. If I make, put this blue here, it's gonna, I'm gonna darken up this, okay? I have to mix a lighter blue. Okay. Now, with light blue, I knock down this color. Okay. Now, the more I add light blue, or just blue, I knock down the color more and more. What's the other option? Okay, the other option is using gray, black and white. But that's a little bit dangerous using black and white. Why? Because obviously we can just knock down the color completely. And uh, we basically we, we destroy the color. We, we, uh, we use a lot of black and white when we paint portraits. But it's different, you know. I gotta be more controlled. Okay, um, we got that. What if I add more? Okay, now I knock down this color. Okay, I'm knocking down this color. At the same time, what, what I, I have to think is, okay, this color is more yellowish, but I can see it's more yellowish. I'm gonna add a touch of yellow. I'm just mixing here on, I don't have too much room on my palette. Okay. Then we can add more, more light blue. of yellow okay now it's not it's not that uh, like saturated dark brown okay Anyway, it's not close enough yet to the horse, but it's lighter, and I can continue working on top of this. Okay. Okay. Now let's go to the face. <coughs> what I need on the face is, I'm going to use a different brush. I need a darker color for the shadows. Could you split to the link to your sound channel? Oh, okay, I'm gonna look for my... Okay, just one second. find a link okay uh, while I'm looking for the link I'm gonna just check out more more questions uh, okay, let's see uh, is there a size you paint at Oh, the size, this is nine, kind of nine, nine by nine inches. Yeah. Do you use col canvas or did you, or you did it colored? Oh, yeah, I, 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 uh, I toned uh, the canvas with acrylic. Okay, okay. Uh, Okay, okay, I, I, I have a name here, sorry, I cannot, I, I don't know how to pronounce your name. 
Why you paint first in different color, like for the horse? You didn't paint directly like the color in the horse? Oh, yeah. To, mm, it's, it's something that maybe I should do that. <laughs> it's just my first layer. It's just kind of, you know, get some color. Get some color that's going to be close. That's a base color. I mean, that's not my intention to finish up the painting on the first brush stroke with the first brush strokes like the face you know I need to to get something here and really fast and then adjust it and that's that's what more I what more I do I mean there are different ways for example it's been 30 minutes 35 minutes you know I think I painted regularly yeah and let's say that my, my approach is different I prefer to match the colors or try to match the colors from the very beginning you know right right now maybe uh, on my painting that would, you would you just could see my drawing and just I could I would spend that time mixing you know with the colors on my palette mixing and mixing and mixing trying to match the colors on the photograph yeah uh, just that it's just a difference it's not I'm not saying that uh, one way is better than the other it's just what you want to do just that yeah. for sure maybe one of these days I would, I would do that but you know what uh, I can maybe I, I love to see something and then compare okay and that's my way to to paint now I'm thinking maybe about the difficulties of doing that because uh, let's say that you got a color that's not a close and then you gotta fix it by adding more and more paint and then maybe you won't get to that color and you end up with a lot of paint yeah I mean there it's not like uh, pretty easy let's say I would say that I just got used to that Definitely, if I see something blue, I'm gonna paint that blue. Yeah. And yeah. so many different things that just we change. Uh, for example, as soon as I said that, that when I see I see something blue, I paint that blue. Just it came to my mind that sometimes I start with the opposite color, just to create more contrast. Yeah. yeah, so many, uh, sometimes there are some few ways to start painting. Yeah, each, each person got to choose just the best way, what works for each one of you. And yeah, just that. Okay. Hello, Sinet. Hello, Marilyn. Okay, let's see. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about the, the drawing of the face, the contour. Mm -hmm. Move white on my palette. Speaking about that, you know, it came to my mind a couple of some friends of when I was a student of the School of Art. I don't know which way, but you can see something like, uh, for example, I remember one of my friends just staying there on, you know, uh, his easel just 
mixing and mixing on the palette, mixing and mixing and comparing with the objects, comparing the color. Uh, you know, you come back after an hour, uh, he just have the drawing and a lot of mixtures on the palette. Eh? And another friend that I remember that this guy, he used to use a lot of paint, but it looks like he was more uh, like, um, I'm gonna say his character, you know, he wanted to more impulsive. I don't know how to say it, but the thing is that he has, he started to paint right away, you know, and his painting of this guy was, looks like a mess at the very beginning. Little by little, you know, I started to, you started to see the shapes, the forms. Yeah. And I remember the other, my other friend, after an hour, an hour and a half, you see that he started to paint. And he was pretty close, you know, at the first brush strokes. Yeah. And at the end, you know, you could say that each way works one way or the other. It's just what you want. Okay, let's see. The contour of the face. Uh, I think it's okay. Mm. I'm comparing right now, I'm just comparing. Okay, when I work. Okay, um, mm -hmm. okay, when I work a little bit on a few details, I need a tiny brush. Um, okay, I got this one. I'm mixing raw umber and Camium red. Mm, okay. At the same time, I need uh, this brush with this color. Okay. Let's see. I'm gonna work on the eye here. I'm just keeping this triangular shape. Mm. of camion red more coming red coming red and white mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay I see some greenish colors on the face Thinking right now about uh, the greenish colors, I see that here, here, the pinky colors here in the nose, the cheek. We all know that the pinky colors in the face, you know, we want to see always in every painting, in every portrait, some reddish colors on the face, okay? 
I'm gonna just do some pink you know, cheek, cheek, nose. Okay, upper and lower eyelid. I'm gonna see more red there. And chin. Okay. Now, what about green? Let's see if this green works. see green, a little bit of greenish here now we gotta obviously try to match the value here okay and here okay we can see green on the neck There is a green that I love to, to work the greenish colors on the skin. Thus, uh, uh, I have it here, I think. Sorry, I mean, for. Um, have it you know I don't remember the name I remember the name in Spanish I don't remember the name in English okay, okay uh, I got a question here uh, okay oh, I got some comments on Facebook sorry hello Donna hello Belinda hello Jana hello uh, Joanne uh, hello Paul Hello, Soilia. Hello, Omar. Oh, thank you so much, everybody, you know, for being here. Uh, I got a question if I love to prepare the canvas with oil or of acrylic. I do it because it dries quickly. Yes, yeah. And I, I turned down this canvas like a, maybe an hour ago. Maybe less than an hour ago. Some painters, I have seen some painters just, they love to turn the canvas with oil, oil paint, and work, you know, on that when it's still kind of wet. But that's okay, you know, it, it's just, the thing that helps, that helps with color, okay? But it's not gonna solve all the problems. All the problems we're gonna face are the same. And usually that has to do with drawing, that means proportions. Yeah. And it doesn't have to do anything with uh, the canvas, that, obviously. And then we have to check out values. And the same with values, you know. The, ca the canvas is usually, it's, just, it's, just, uh, it's useful to add uh, mm. luminosity if we want. You know, imagine that you paint on a pretty orangey canvas, more orangey than mine. Mine is kind of brown, a light brown, or a yellow canvas. Imagine painting a landscape and just painting on a yellow canvas. That's gonna add something to every color that you put on top. Yeah? I, and if I have a, a story that I, I said before, I'm pretty sure I did. I remember when I when I was teaching on the School of Art a few years ago. You know, this student, there was a student, and she there was some kind of contest. You know, a lamps landscape contest. The next day, and she came to me like, "Hey, I want to improve my paintings." You know, for 
And you say, okay, like for what, for tomorrow? And she was, yeah, for tomorrow. I mean, one day you're not gonna change anything. Even an advice, any advice I have, you know, is gonna just fade in the air. I mean, you know, a lot of the things that we learn on painting, all of the things we learn on painting uh, are just sink in our brain just by repetition. It means practice. But the thing that I uh, saw her paintings, and I told her, okay, just prepare a yellow canvas, okay? Uh, because she has some kind of mute colors, and I, I told her, prepare a yellow, yellow, but uh, even a fluorescent yellow canvas, a print. She was like, for real? Yeah. And paint on top of that. And just, just paint using the colors you use. But one thing, be sure that what you see, you guys stay just using your palette, your colors. Okay, don't stop because what's going to happen, you're going to see different colors on your canvas because of the contrast. Okay, you're gonna just keep painting. And at the end, <laughs> she ended up on the second place, I think. She was pretty nice, you know. Her painting, it was kind of glowing in some areas. You can see some greenish colors just glowing. And that was because of the canvas. Okay. That adds something more to her paintings in terms of color. Okay. Mm Yeah. More questions, please. More questions. Hello, Nicole. The girls that you have here painting with darker hair and features reminds me of my granddaughter. So cute. Oh, that's pretty nice, Nicole. Hello, Chris. Cares Tin from Germany. Yeah. Okay. Just please remember to smash the like button. Okay. I'm mixing black and white. <clears throat> okay, let's paint uh, the eye here. Okay, I'm gonna just use black for the pupil. Okay. 
okay a little bit of gray for the iris a little bit of this uh, brown for the white of the eye I just maybe thinking I should add more white kind of trying to clean the uh, this clear of the eye hmm I'm gonna think about that I have raw umber here a little bit of yellow with raw umber okay I need a light blue Cover blue and white. Okay, I need more white. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to uh, mix again black and white. That's too light, a little bit darker. Again, What's the name of this? Rains, yeah, the rains. I think there's another another name for for that. No, no rains. Don't remember. Sorry. Okay. Uh, yes, I'm gonna add those things just with raw umber, raw umber, just raw umber. Let's see. Okay. Okay, 
no I need more yellow here touch of white Okay. Hello Juan, uh, veo todos tus videos, gracias. Okay, I'm going to blend a little bit. Mm, no, I'm going to continue just adding more paint, okay? Yeah. A little bit more paint. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have more blue and yellow. Well, speaking about the, the canvases, you know, I try just to remember so many painters just using different canvases. There are the painters that use a black a black canvas. Yeah. You know, we, uh, another thing that happens when we use, we, when we turn down the canvas, is that uh, we're going to see some kind of... Um, we're gonna see the color, you know, beneath. It's gonna show through some smaller areas. Like you're gonna see, like, some kind of echo. The color just echo here, here, and here. That kind of creates some harmony, which is pretty nice. It's pretty good. I won't recommend to paint. Uh, for example, speaking about painting on a prima, I won't recommend to paint on a black, a darker canvas. The darker one that would be gray. And that's when it depends when you want uh, something kind of mute or you want some kind of painting, a, a, a kind of a classical portrait, you know, kind of toned down with a dark background. I would use a gray canvas, okay? just black and white. When you want a more colorful painting, you know, I could use a, a more colorful, you know, color like uh, like orange, like any, any. I mean, you you could just we usually use colors that are closer. You know, it goes about gray and basically light brown, like an orangey light brown. That's the most uh, the colors that we we wanna see when I see painters use uses. Okay. Uh, but we can try with more and more colors. Yeah, okay. We feel free to try more and more colors. Let me highlight here. Got camion red. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna mix camion red and a different crimson for the upper lip. Uh, if somebody wants to experiment with really dark canvases, I mean, don't do that for a La Prima painting because. When we paint at a prima, uh, we basically we just have one layer. Even if you, we have a thick layer, the painting when we dry is kind of you know it's transparent. It's gonna show through you know this darker color. It's gonna affect what you have on the surface. 
try uh, no if you planning to work on a painting on a lot of layers yeah you can try just even a black canvas and experiment and see what happens Add more red to the nose. Come in, red. Touch of orange here. and crimson for the nostril and just adding more saturation on the shadows Mixing raw umber and the litter and crimson yeah, because this has to be a little bit darker. Yeah, mm, maybe no. Yeah, maybe I, I, I gotta, uh, maybe I'm not gonna paint that that dark. Yeah, let's see. Mm. pointy brush got one here use pure black to paint the pupil Low Wolf Pack Studios Sylvie is asking I paint on black canvases only when I want to paint some kind of landscapes. Oh yes? Oh wow. Oh that's good, you know, yeah. Yeah. I do prefer I do prefer a, a, a you know a lighter color for a landscape. It depends, you know, because there are so many landscapes. There are some dark landscapes. In that case, yeah, that would be okay. But if I want to get, you know, the light effect, you know, some luminosity, I would prefer even even a white canvas. You know, if I don't have anything to tone my canvas, I would just use a white canvas. It's just like uh, when you start to tone down the canvas and you start to see that, let's say that it's easier to first control values and second, you got something more from the canvas, like uh, something, okay, it's about color, you start to realize that you, you should tone down every canvas. But it's not something that we have to do it. No, no, that's no. There's no way. We, I mean, painting is so free that we could 
we can just try whatever we want. But if you go around checking out professional painters, let's say, you know, you're gonna realize that, uh, like, they prefer, like, a lot of them, they prefer to, to tone down the canvas. 90% of them, maybe, I would say. Yeah. And there are obviously some, some painters that they prefer a white canvas. It's okay for everybody. I just I just uh, tell you to ask yourself why, you know, it's like most of the painters prefer to tone the canvas. has to be some kind of advantage about doing that. Yeah? It is, about color, it is. And about uh, values, obviously, because uh, imagine that you, we try and obviously, when we paint, we basically try to get a lot of, a range of values that goes from white to black. You know, a lot of values. And this, uh, it's better to think that if we start the, kind of in the middle with a mid-tone, it's gonna be easy to move to the lighter values and to the darker values than starting on a on a white canvas, you know, or starting on a black canvas. It's the same. It's the same. You start on a black canvas. Imagine all the way that you gotta move, kind of go to get to the light. It's just like oh my god, you're starting on the you know the darker value. You gotta move to the lightest lights from there. It's the same when you move from a white canvas. It's like, oh my God, I gotta move to the darker values from the white canvas. It, it's easier, you know, when you work on reality, working on, uh, it's easier to work on a white canvas and a black canvas. You know, but when you think about that in terms of values, it's just like you say, you know, it's just like, it's just too much of a difference. We gotta start with something in the middle. Step back. Okay, I'm gonna add more light here, more greens. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, I gotta work on some mid-tones, especially on the hair, I think. Yeah, I need more light at the same time on the, on the cheek to make this more rounded. Okay, it could be about adding more light or it could be about adding more shadow here. can just try to change temperature too I mean what if I make it more make it warmer here even more okay now sometimes we want to do a few changes sub 21 okay sometimes we just, we just want to copy the photograph but at some point you're going to realize that you you're going to enjoy more when you change make a few changes like you know to to add something to make a change to make the painting obviously always trying to make the painting more beautiful yeah. now if i compare my painting with the photograph i see differences obviously 
<coughs> about <coughs> sorry about drawing, I think I'm doing okay. About color, I see differences now. Uh, that's that's when you are gonna ask yourself is uh, is better to keep, you know, those those differences. In my case, you know, I kind of I like more the color I have on my canvas. Okay. I like it more, yeah. but it's, it means it's better, it's meaning it's, it's okay, no, it's just, you know, you want to hear, you want to listen so often the painter saying, we paint what we see, we paint what we know, and we paint what we love to see, what we would love to see, that means that uh, we copy, but you, we just we don't just copy by trying to copy exactly every detail. We add knowledge, and then on top of that, we make changes just for the things that we want to change in order to see maybe more color, less color, I don't know, whatever it is. Okay, uh, I'm gonna work on the eyes. Just using raw amber. I'm gonna zoom in. I think that's more clear the colors that you see here. Yeah? Look at that. I love the difference between this greenish color, grayish, greenish, and this pinky, reddish color on the nose. But that's me, okay? Anyway, I, I love that. I'm mixing black and a lizard crimson. Kind of difficult to try to work on smaller details. more light to the face. <clears throat> you think this is the lightest light on the face?
Okay, step back. I think more light. <clears throat> okay, need more light there, more contrast. Okay. <laughs> you want to use the brush that I use for blending? I love this brush. Look at the hair. It's pretty good for blending and it's pretty good for painting hair. Uh, okay, sometimes I use this and sometimes I use a firm brush. Okay, what I use today is this one. Oh, first, I'm gonna try, okay? First, using this one and see if that works. I continue, if not, I'm gonna switch to use a fan brush. Okay, uh, what well, Silvia's saying, do you, did you ever paint some portraits of la landscapes for fairy tales, for instance, for books for children? Oh, no. No. No, sorry. Oh, hello, Arla Sang saying I want to get admission as online about portrait. Please guide me about admission. About portrait. Okay. Yeah. Okay, there are. Uh, maybe you're asking me about the membership on YouTube. Yeah, okay. Uh, my videos in YouTube are free, and after I finish up, you know, the, 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 I, all the videos stays on my channel for free, okay? Now, there is an option, there's a new option on my channel, it says membership. I added the option for people that maybe wants to uh, support me with, you know, a few amount of money. Uh, that's Two, I think two, three dollars, you know, per month. Obviously, you don't have to do it for every month. Okay, and it's basically that. That's why it says membership there. Okay, and uh, the idea of, I gotta say thank you because I have like seven or eight members now, which is pretty nice. Okay, I was thinking, you know, because I have some recorded lessons, uh, maybe to post one recorded lesson every month. I'm thinking right now, I'm not so sure what I'm going to do. Okay, just an idea. 
but anyway, the, the point is if you're a member, if somebody's a member, I mean, there's going to be a, a little ba badge, badge, a little symbol next to your name on the comments. That means that every time that you show up on a live session, I could see for sure that you're a member. I know that could be pretty obvious. And uh, I gotta save you. I mean, for me, that would be a priority. Ask, you no, know, answer the questions, the members. Okay, that's basically that. I mean, right now it's not that much of a deal. Is, yeah, but let's say at some point there is more and more people, and and let's say one day I got a lot of questions. Okay, and uh, maybe I'm not gonna be able to answer to everybody. For sure that I gotta answer to the people that is, you know, has a membership on my channel. But that, that, that doesn't happen usually, you know. Art is not that big to get like a lot of people at once. On. Okay. But anyway, that was the explanation about membership and and at some point when uh, at some point maybe that's another idea I'm getting those ideas for different channels okay uh, there's there are some channels that offers exclusive live live streams just for members okay that means for the ones that pay the monthly fee you know there are some ch channels that offers one at least, at least once a month a live exclusive live stream obviously less people it means more attention to each one yeah I don't know yeah, something like that maybe with time I could do something like that but I would love to do it on zoom in this way it could be an interaction yeah? because here there is not in, I mean people comment People comment and I answer the question, just that, but on Zoom is it's more like we're going to see each other, we're going to hear our voices, we're going to see our faces. Yeah. Obviously it's different. Yeah, maybe I can do that once a month with the members of the channel. If somebody wants to be a member, you just click uh, there is some there is a button next to the sub subscription button it says join okay now I got the same option on patreon and patreon is about lessons it's about painting alone lessons yeah? we paint alone Saturdays we paint animals we paint still life Saturdays with oil paint and acrylics and and it's just for four dollars per month we paint on Saturdays no portraits still life and all of that oh speaking about acrylics at the same time I gotta tell you that I have a new channel where I paint with acrylics actually a couple of days ago I, I did my first live stream on that channel here's the name for people that love acrylics okay it's gonna be just exclusively for acrylics. I'm gonna paint just like here, you know. I paint. I, I got. Uh, I I don't have any portrait yet on that channel. I just started the channel. That's the link on the comments. For the people that love acrylics, you can just sus subscribe sub subscribe to that channel. And I'm planning to go live once a week, like here. And planning obviously to try different materials and all of that, you know. Or maybe not, maybe just painting with, with what I have. Yeah, who knows? The point does the, the link there and the comments. You can join. And that would be similar to this one, just with acrylics. I painted a horse, by the way, a couple of days ago. I'm gonna paint the hair. I need more white on my palette.
Just one second, please. I gotta just do something. Okay, I'm back. Pay the soul is. Sorry. Sí. ¿En qué cola? Sorry, I just I was speaking to somebody here. Okay. Hello, Jonas. Janice is saying it's blonde hair, a mix of white, yellow, and ochre. Yeah, and even uh, some green. <laughs> even we see a little bit of green on blonde hair. Well, I mean, you know that I'm speaking about subtle colors, not green, green for some kind of greenish color. No, I, I love this, um, there is an orangey reflected color here, and that definitely does, that is a reflected color from the horse, yeah? Smaller brush, got raw umber and a little uh, camel red.
<clears throat> okay, let's see. Fair view animal hospital is saying, Renzo, did you try a big size portrait? Yeah, I painted. Yeah. I think I, I, I painted bigger portraits than smaller portraits. Uh, you mean here for YouTube? Uh, no. Yeah, for YouTube, no. And no. Uh, uh, if I, if somebody's just thinking if I could, if I could paint bigger portraits from YouTube, I don't think so. The the problem is that um, the setup, you know, I have my camera from a distance. In this way, you can see like a front view, and next to my camera. If I paint a bigger portrait. Uh, <clears throat> I would just need to move, you know, uh, the camera away from the, the canvas, and that would be a different setup. And yeah, I don't think I, I would do it. And uh, by the way, you know that uh, this is uh, I, I, I enjoy painting, and I keep basically all the paintings from for me. I have said a few a few of the paintings I have. You know, I have sold a few of the paintings, but basically I keep most of the paintings just for me. And I don't have too much space just to keep bigger paintings. Yeah. Um, painting some, some, I'm painting a bigger painting right now. That's a, a composition, they say, a more, more um, creative painting with some composition and uh, but I, I, that's kind of pretty difficult for me to 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 show that in, in, in YouTube have a bunch of paintings here that are finished paintings the size I got like maybe six or seven the size of the bigger one is kind of 50 by 60 inches yeah. and the smaller one is I think is 30 or 40 by 40 by 40 I think the smaller one is 40 by 40 yeah. Usually I spend like a few months working on those paintings. It's more about the composition, you know. 
I, I love this uh, like faster way of painting. I love to see the face right away. I love to, I, I mean, I love everything about painting, obviously, but you know, I love more like when I paint at the Prima, I think, but definitely it does, it's not possible to paint a bigger painting at the Prima just in one, one sitting. Arsalan say I have subscribed to your YouTube channel. Thank you so much. See we seeing what kind of blue is in her eyes. I just have copper blue. I just copper blue. But I don't remember if I painted the eyes with copper blue. Sometimes I just use black and white. And it looks like you know like copper like blue, but it doesn't have any blue, it's just black and black and white. But black and white, you have a grayish, bluish color. That's why it looks bluish. Okay, I'm gonna paint the horse. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna use this brush, the brush that I'm using for for blending. Maybe I should use a fan brush. Okay, I think I'm gonna use a fan brush. Let me just look for my fan brush. orange Need to go out to buy some fan brushes. I remember that that uh, I, I I just have a couple. The ones that I use, I have more here. I have this one, but this one is too big. I mean, that's the one, not the one here. The ones that I use are pretty. Uh, smaller ones and I know what I don't have there then here because I was cleaning them really 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 good because I started to use them for the click for acrylic paintings yeah, and yeah 
no, no. I'm gonna get some, I have to get some clean new brushes. I could use them, you know, for oil paints right now if I find them. I don't know where I put them. Because at the end, I mean, the, uh, the, uh, the brushes is pretty easy to clean with, uh, with water when we use the brushes for a click. Hello, Luna Drea. Luna Drea. Hello, Pan Panos. Thank you. Art Salan is saying, sending my email. Please inform me about getting admission via email. Okay, I'm gonna check out the, that as soon as I finish up the, the live stream. bit of green for okay you can see a light on the tear dock here some light to the iris uh, 
Thank you, RB. Okay, I need to get some blend in here. I need more blue. This is cobalt blue. Okay, I need some black. Feel free to ask me any question. Even if you think that maybe it's kind of a you know a common question or a question that I, I, I've been asked so many times, that's okay. Mixing raw umber, orange, and coming red.
Putting down my eyes and stepping back. Yeah, I gotta go back to work on the uh, the uh, the kid's face, the little girl's face. Okay, let me see. Yep. Okay, I'm gonna paint a little bit of the ear here in this portion. Yep. pink and mix uh, alizarin crimson with raw umber Maybe somebody's asking about the colors. I'm gonna mention the colors again. I have titanium white, cadmium yellow, cadmium orange, cadmium red. I have a darker red that's gonna be permanent alizarin crimson. And raw umber. I'm using raw umber a lot. I just I just use it to darken up any color. Cobalt blue, sometimes I use cobalt blue or ultramarine blue. Okay, just to grade down some colors. That's uh, it could be cobalt, it could be ultramarine blue. It, uh, it's not like uh, there's no specific reason for that. You know, it's as simple as that. Sometimes I got the the ultramarine tube closer to, closer to me. I use ultramarine. Sometimes a cobble, cobble, I use cobble. Sylvie's asking me, do you think that is completely, completely different to paint from real life and to paint from the picture? I have only some house in the weekend uh, to paint, so it's difficult to have time to paint from real life. Yeah, from real life is more difficult. So, yeah, it's more difficult. First, uh, okay, something pretty simple that we are consider that the model or whatever we paint, we, we, we plan to paint something like a portrait or, you know, it's going to move. And if we plan to paint a, a still life, for example, uh, we got to take care of the light, light, light conditions, okay? Because that change and the change, the light change and that change the colors. I'm gonna make it here a little bit darker. We're gonna create the illusion that this is uh, rounded. Okay. I think it's time for me to capture my screen and use Photoshop to compare. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna use it now. I'm gonna do it now. Okay, another thing that, uh, but everybody's gonna say something is that definitely is a must to paint from real life. Okay, and that's I think that's true. That's that's it's pretty important. But nowadays, I gotta be honest. You know, for me, it's been like years. Maybe the last time I painted painted a portrait in real life has been like four, three or four years ago. When I was working as a teacher, you know, the the principal they used to took me to do live demos, and that was pretty nice for me, you know. I gotta say that the first time I kind of I was kind of rusty because I, it's been a long time it was since I painted on real life, but it was pretty nice, you know. And it's, I mean, for me maybe it's because of the pressure, but it's faster really faster okay it's, it's just like 
I used to paint a real life portrait in an hour, which I think is pretty good, but there is a lot of pressure. First, it's a live demo, you know, few people is gonna stay from more than an hour. And just the people that used to stay, the people that love, you know, art, the same way that we do. Okay, I'm gonna share my screen. Okay, here's Photoshop, and here's the painting and the photograph. I'm gonna flip it. And I think, uh, I think I'm pretty close, you know? One thing I gotta, I gotta work, I gotta be sure of working. It's gonna be not now, but definitely I have that in mind. Edges, okay? I cannot leave an edge like like this look at that edge just one edge one kind of when we got something like that we gotta think hey it's not about copying the photograph you know it's gonna be about just making darker here lighter here things like that you know sharper here softer here and you gotta find a way to make it look more natural uh, maybe the photograph shows an edge like that and that's when it's not about copying the photograph anymore on those little details when it's about ages, you know. It's more about what you know, it's more about what you want, about the, the create illusion of depth, okay? Create some softness, like for example here, I could just soften this edge. Okay, uh, let's, let's uh, go, let's check out the things that I want to check out. Ages is going to be something that I could do at the end. Okay, first thing that I want to check out that's going to be um, drawing. Drawing, I think, is eh, it's good. Wow. What happened? What happened? What did I do? Hmm. Well, it's not working, man. Okay, I'm gonna check out my Photoshop. Stop working, that just stopped working. I don't know why. Oh, so sorry, I don't know. I don't know what happened, but it just stopped working. Maybe in a minute it's gonna be okay. Hello, Michael. Yeah, I don't know what happened with Photoshop. Anyway, if we don't have a tool like that, like Photoshop, obviously we just need to squint down our eyes. I wanted to show you, like I usually do, you know, uh, about the values and the drawing. Okay, I'm gonna continue thinking about values. Okay, I gotta squint down my eyes. Uh, for example, the shadow here under the nose. How dark is the shadow? And obviously, since it's something rounded, we gotta think that's gonna be maybe a reflected light, something, you know. something that's gonna happen there. About color, we gotta think uh, if we, you know, add more contrast, saturate the colors a little bit more, okay? Uh, here the upper lip, there's gonna be an area that is a little bit lighter. Okay, usually up. And it's darker, obviously here when there is contact from the upper lip with the lower lip and at the same time there's going to be a cast shadow from the upper lip okay you gotta remember those things because when we see the photograph sometimes we don't see that we just think there is just there is just one dark line between the lips okay and using a lizard in crimson 
okay, with a little bit of rubber, with a little bit of uh, cadmium red. It's not completely black. Okay. Okay, I'm squinting down my eyes, trying to compare again. Okay, now there is a uh, the T. I gotta just darken up here a little bit and squinting down my eyes and compare as much as possible. When, when I squint down my eyes, I see basically all this area a little bit darker all here okay and it goes down to uh, the lower eyelid I see that at the same time it's a little bit darker here. Now I am on the point that I gotta check out everything and think about value differences here and there everywhere on the face because I started the painting just with two, three values and on the face there are more than that definitely more than that a little bit darker here okay now here on the cheek i see something that goes like that same time what I see is a cast shadow from this uh, line of expression here cast shadow cast shadow here a little bit soft okay keep squinting down your eyes try to see as much as possible A little bit darker here. The chin is rounded. Everything that is rounded, it has, you know. We gotta just think about primary form. Remember, I keep repeating that. What's the primary form of something that is rounded? A sphere. If we practice how to shade a sphere, you know, we're gonna be okay just trying to get the volume of anything that is rounded. Now we're gonna work here a little bit on the edge. I'm going to try to soften the edge here a little bit. No, maybe, you know, here. I'm going to work on a soft edge here. Hang on the neck. I'm going to keep um, this a little bit sharper. Yeah. Okay. A little bit of shadow here. I'm gonna just blend the shadow a little bit more. Move the shadow in the into the face, into the neck. Okay. What else? What else? Keep continuous squinting down my eyes. Okay. I see it's a little bit darker here. The more we add those mid-tones, the more volume we, ha we, we got on the face, okay? Okay, 
again. Mm. Squinting on my ass, stepping back. Here, a mid tone here. Be because there is a cast shadow from the hair on the face. Any object that is overlapping another object, it creates a cast shadow. Okay? Nothing has like a nothing has like a sharp edge. What else? Mm -hmm. Okay. A little bit darker here, a little bit. Okay, uh, we gotta be careful about lights. Uh, for example, where's the lightest light on the face? I think is uh, here. Okay. Usually, another light, another light, is on the nose, the tip of the nose. Okay. Just be careful not paint the same light, the same bright light, on the chin or here on top of the mouth. Okay. Sometimes we make we make the mistakes so often. Just we pack we pick up the same color and just we just put the same color everywhere on the face. Okay, there may, even may, maybe even the the light on the nose is not that bright. Okay, that means that the light here on the chin is uh, not going to pick up the same color, just going to pick up a different color, different value to add the light on the chin. And always squinting down my, my eyes and controlling how bright is this light. Maybe it's not that bright, I need to knock it down. But it's made more shadow here. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. I'm gonna clean my brush for blending. I use this one for blending to pick up a few, a few of one color and just put the color down, but at the same time, I blend and mix the color okay okay now let's think about the hair we gotta move you know all over the painting here and there
<laughs> I can smell the brush. Okay, this is where my thing is gonna work. A mm, little bit of light there, more light here, eh? some brightest light here. How do you like the painting? I mean. I like the painting, for me, I like the painting because I like the photograph, yeah? Pretty nice photograph. I should try to pick up a no nice photograph and try to, you know, change it and make it a beautiful painting. That, the, that's, that would be pretty difficult. I gotta soften some shadows on the face. Mm. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna blend. I'm gonna soften here. Soften here. Okay. Okay, I'm just going to uh, add some brush strokes here to try to insinuate the light on the rain because, you know, just too much details there. There's a cast shadow here. Yeah. 
Yeah, maybe it was dark is enough. Okay, so I'm gonna soften some edges. I remember when some of my teacher used to speak about ages. For me, it was like ages. Who care about ages? You know, I want to see every detail. If I just soften some area, I'm gonna just lose details. It took me a lot of time to understand that it's not like we want to see everything on the painting. You know, and it's not like we're gonna soften all the edges away. You know, it's just we. It's just like light, light and shadow. In order to see light, we need shadows. Yeah, in order to see uh, the focal point, let's say, we need some soft edges, and the soft edges kind of just direct our eyes. You know, or we don't see then, and we stand just to kind of just look for sharp edges, and usually that's the focal point. But it's not—it's not something that is going to be like watching something pretty on on focus. You know, it's something that's, that could be pretty subtle. Okay. Orange, pure orange, just some touches. There. Okay, I'm gonna mix a little bit of violet. Just a tiny bit, okay. I'm gonna put it just here. Let me mix some more green. Okay, more orange and red here. Pure white. <clears throat> okay, it's been an hour, not two hours and a half. Yeah, I think I, uh, uh, I can continue working a little bit more. Yeah, I'm gonna move to the horse.
Okay, uh, let's see. What about the face? You know, I like the color. Uh, at the same time, you know, I'm thinking you should knock down maybe the pinky color because I can see that my painting is more pinky. But I like it, okay? Uh, but I like it, the photograph too. I, li I like those uh, softness. Sometimes we get some nice colors just by accident. Yeah, and sometimes we just obviously mix a mix. I gotta say that uh, thinking about you know the live demos that I used to to do when I was a teacher, you know, I didn't have any option. I remember you know because my the principal is my friend, and he was like, "Hey, right, so there is a live demo. You gotta you gotta go." It was like, no, "I don't want to. <laughs> you gotta go." Just you know. And sometimes we uh, we go to uh, let's say to an academy or and the the demo usually was for young people, teenagers. You know, to the people to uh, find out what they want. And that was pretty nice to see some some few of them just stay there for the whole hour. And asking some questions, and sometimes they, some of them, show me, showed me some drawings, you know. And they were, they were pretty excited, like, oh my God, there's a school of art, and you can study this and that. Yeah, wow. A few of them, they didn't even know that the school of art existed. And, you know close to, to them because yeah, when uh, obviously here in my country is you know study art is not like everybody in your family is gonna be excited like, about that yeah. everybody wants to be what I don't know businessman you know entrepreneur entrepreneur I think that's the word and or a professional lawyer Doctor, you know. being an artist is not necessarily on the first, the first option. That's why they they are you know they didn't they even know because they they don't say usually to any anyone. People know you know that as teenagers they draw. They are good at drawing, but not to the point to start to study art. Here in Lima, in the capital, let's say that here is kind of different. You know, the school of art that they used to work, it was uh, eight hours from here. I used to go by bus at night. I used to go uh, at like uh, some kind of 10 p.m. And I was there at six, kind of five, six a.m. And five, let's say five, yeah, it was kind of dark sometimes. Five. And then from there I have to took I have to take a I had to take a a, a automi automobile, I mean an, it's kind of a cab, but it was full of people, you know, for an hour. And then I got to this uh town. And I used to do that every every week, every yeah. I mean, I used to go from that town to Lima on Fridays night, and I go back there uh, Mondays night, you know, to be there the next day to work. Yeah. Eight hours. That was pretty nice. 
Uh, I never felt that that for for real the eight hours, you know, because I used to fall asleep after just an hour. Few times that I had to to travel by day, and that's yeah, that's horrible because you cannot sleep. You know, it's just like the fun, the, the only good thing is just like watching it through the window. It's just like watching a movie. Because the landscape, the landscapes are pretty amazing there, and the mountains, and you see some mountains with snow, some some amazing just like light blue rivers, like amazing, just it's, it's amazing. I mean. In a lot of mining companies, that's another thing that it was all the way to when I was, you know, awake, I could count on those eight hours at least like ten huge, huge mining companies. Just huge. It's not, not, you know, it's beyond my imagination. The first time I saw a mining company. It's a whole a huge hole, you know, like I mean, maybe somebody has an idea, but I would say that you don't have any idea how huge of those things. It doesn't matter what hour you go, you pass through, you know, the, a mining company. It's just working 24-7. Okay, I think I like it. Maybe I'm gonna work a few more minutes. I don't know, uh, you know, I think I got what I got is pretty nice. I don't know about adding more maybe oil paint, maybe some, I was thinking some loose brush strokes here on the horse to make a difference with the softness of the, you know, the gear. Uh, yeah, it could be. You no, know, or maybe even here, you know, the background. Well, let me see if I can add just more, more paint. I'm picking some pure orange, picking up some pure orange and put it down here. Uh, but I know that I'm gonna move this. Okay, it's different when you're planning to remember lay down the paint and just leave it there. Or do you already plan in ahead to mix it? pretty nice when you see a painting that it has some rough loose brush strokes and some softness that okay I see some something maybe no okay on, on her mouth hmm oh no Maybe I should shorten, narrow the mouth a little bit. Soften the edge. I see a sharp edge here on the photograph. I just want to try to soften that on my paint. Okay. What about highlight on the eye? I don't see it, but what about if I use? I can add a little bit of a highlight on the lower eyelid.
do a bit of orange. I think it works pretty nice, a little bit of orange because of reflected light you know, for, for the horse. Okay. Mm. Yeah, I see that the hair, for example, is more yellowish here. Oh no, I think that's okay that I have this kind of mute. Yeah. I mean, that, that wasn't intentional, obviously. It's just like I, I didn't work that much in this area, but I think that works good because I see all the light here. If I add the yellowish, you know, yellow it kind of call the attention that much. Maybe if I decide to add more color and it would be yellow, it would be, it would be here, a little bit here. Yeah. That definitely is gonna grab our attention, call for our attention, it's more color. What about there? Mm, I don't know. Yeah, I think it works. I think it works. Okay. A little bit more green. Remember I said my, my, my son, he was just commenting in somebody, and Sharon, you asked me about my, my son channel. He's trying to draw, you know, he started to draw a few years ago, but he's not that, he doesn't spend a lot of time drawing, but he loves to draw. The point of here is his channel, okay? Yeah. Maybe one day he's gonna be an artist. I don't know, I, maybe I was thinking that. I was telling, hey, you know, you gotta be, uh, uh, maybe I'm not doing okay as a father, but I was like, he was thinking, what should I study? Like, like what? I, he, he, did, he doesn't know, he's like one of um, his cousins, study to how to, what is this thing to kind of I don't know the name of this thing but it's used for for to create games and he was like I, I think I'm gonna study that and you know uh, kind of common for a for a teenager maybe these days since they spend a lot of time you know playing games on the computer yeah. But at the same time, he spent some time, some of his time drawing. And he created a channel a few years ago. And he had some videos when he was a, a kid, a little kid. And he was eight years old, maybe nine. For, I mean, he... <laughs> He didn't erase those videos, but he kept those videos private now. And I was, why do you do that? I mean, that's pretty nice to see you when you were a kid. No, I don't want anybody to see me when I was a kid. I said, okay. And I remember that he was, he was the one, he was telling me, hey, Dad, why don't you do more videos on your YouTube channel? And I was like, because it's just, you know, it's just like a lot of time, you know, editing the videos, and I'm not so good at that. And now one day I saw somebody making a live stream, and I thought, 
Okay, I, that, I can do that, I you know, I can paint. It's a lot of pressure painting life, for sure, you know. But at the same time, every time I go live is a challenge, it's a personal challenge. It's my practice, my personal challenge, everything. And at the end, I don't have to edit anything, you know, it's just there. But when I was trying to edit, edit some videos, oh my God, it must maybe days. Could have spent days editing videos. I'm trying to learn anyway. I'm trying to learn a little bit of edition. Okay, I think yeah. like it. Yeah, um, definitely, there's a few things that I should, uh, they definitely, uh, I should, you know, improve. And more things that, for sure, I don't even know because, you know, we gotta just always take a rest and check our paintings with fresh eyes. Okay? Yeah. Anyway, that was a nice live stream. I enjoyed this. Like always, I always enjoy painting, obviously. Yeah. Next live stream, uh, maybe it's, uh, it's gonna be on my... I had softened, I mean, first, this uh, shadow here and this shadow, you know, Okay, I was speaking about my life. Next life stream is gonna be on my acrylic painting channel. Okay, maybe it's gonna be tomorrow. Uh, uh, not so sure yet, but I gotta check out my my time, my schedule. Okay, I think that's it for today. Yeah. If you like it, yes, yeah, please press the like button. Thank you so much for ev uh, everybody for being here. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope, I hope you learned something yeah, from today's live stream. And I'll see you all next time. Thank you all so much. Okay.
Okay, that's it for today. Bye, everybody.